So it's nice to bring a film to Dublin? It is always nice to bring a film home. Yeah. See what it's like with the local audience. Mm -hmm. See how they react to it. That's the main thing, isn't it? Well, they should, they should go down a storm, because, I mean, it's, it's just so much fun. I hope so, man, I hope so. It's one thing if you bring an international movie to Ireland and people don't like it, you can go, oh, you just don't understand it. But when it's an Irish film, if they don't like it, you're fucked. And you were lucky enough to bring Transformers here. That was an amazingly, that was a massive. That was a very financially successful film, yeah. Yeah, and no, but it was a, it, 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 that was a fun night as well, that, that premiere. Yeah. yeah, it was good crack, it was good crack. You had Bumblebee on the ring. Yeah, that was mad actually, wasn't it? I wonder where they have that thing now. There's a good question. You're not, did you not get to keep it? No? I said to them that they should do something with it. Should we go and put it somewhere as a monument? <laughs> Is it nice then to return to a smaller film after making a massive blockbuster like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of films in between now. Like, I mean, I think since I did Transformers, I've done about seven or eight films since. Uh, some of them big, some of them small, but uh, this in particular was a really pleasurable film to do. I mean, you know, John is a very good friend of mine. I'd worked with a lot of the crew before. They were very good friends. Um, and it's a film that I could really relate to. And I certainly, like, believed in the character, you know. I, I felt like it was a very dynamic character, one that I could really get stuck into and do something interesting with. And John really trusted me to do that. And I really trusted him as a director. Um, and I think it worked out very well, and I'll be excited about doing another film with John soon. A wonderful, you know, it's, a, it's an emotive film, but it manages to capture a lot of, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of the joy of youth in, in it as well. Your, your character kind of misses out a little bit because he's a little bit more sullen, a little older, a little more world-weary. Um, was that difficult then to, to play, that sort of character who's emotionally kind of locked into a, a place and time? Um... It wasn't, it wasn't. I mean, I think we all go through periods of that, you know, especially as we're growing up a bit. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of looked at the character as somebody who, he's got a lot of, a lot of comedy. He's got a lot of, um, he's got a kind of a troubled nature about him as well, but he's a hopeful character. He's a hopeful character, kind of, in, in the purest sense, you know, he's somebody who you look at how his life has probably gone off the rails, but maybe there's some way that he's going to pick himself back up again and be able to carry on his life and be a, a you know, functioning member of society. Because there's, there's a hope for him with the, because like, he was living vicariously through the brother for a good period of time, that now that the, the escape and all the rest of the brother, that, yeah. that might lead to him seeing a, a path out himself. Oh, yeah, I think, oh, yeah, I think that, I mean, you can, yeah, like living vicariously is, is, is a way of putting it all right. I reckon that, you know, Brendan's somebody who's sort of grown up being uh, the one on whom all the expectations were probably put initially by the family. And he was supposed to do really well in school academically and make the most out of himself and be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. But uh, I think that ultimately he's fallen by the wayside probably through no fault of his own, if you look at the dynamics of the family in the film. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that he's probably after a period of sitting in his room just smoking incredible amounts of weed and listening to loads of music and doing nothing, he's actually at a point now where the boredom of that has left him with nothing to do but invest his last shred of... Um, attention and engagement into his younger brother to try and help him make something out of himself uh, to make whatever that thing was that he couldn't make out of himself um, so uh, yeah really like a, a really interesting really dynamic character to play a personal one for John I know that much a personal one for me as well in a lot of ways so that made it a real joy, you know, to be able to be at home in Ireland, you know, in a familiar place with familiar people making that film. Your character is, is brilliant in it, and because of that dynamic that you have with her, you, you seem to have a, a proper sort of brotherly relationship in that. But did you have that on set as well? Yeah, absolutely. He's, I mean, Ferdy is 16 now. He was 14 when we shot the film. It was his first movie. He was coming out of school. 
to do it. Um, and, you know, uh, as I was asked in another interview, you know, was it difficult because he'd never had any experience of acting before? And the answer is no, it wasn't difficult. In fact, if anything, uh, that really helped the process because he wasn't acting, he was just living it. And it meant that every instinct that he had was the right instinct and he was relating to it as any 14 year old would. Um, and I think that he's learned an awful lot about what acting is and I think he's, he, he's learned a lot about what it is to make films and now what it is to promote films. <laughs> but um, I think Ferdy is a really talented guy and uh, I think he's going to do very well. Like I say, he's still 16 so he's got a bit of time before, you know, maybe before it's going to really like land in a big way. But I think there's a big career ahead of him if he wants it for himself, as long as he keeps himself grounded and level-headed. He, he, I mean, I, I saw that immediately after Sundance he signed with an agent and all the rest in the US. So he has, he's obviously charting out or planning out his career now at this point. Were you able to, be, being the Sundance old pro that you are now, are you able to guide him in there as well? Well, he signed with my agent, didn't he? <laughs> Competition now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, Freddie and I have very brief conversations about the industry. It's not, it's not my place to um, try and educate him about what, what it is out there or what he needs to do because everybody's path is different and mine was very unique and uh, so too is his. He has this incredible gift for music that I think is so profound and that was the thing that really struck me about the film as I watched it for the first time that you know it's one thing to put in an acting performance but to be able to express yourself and your character through music in such an eloquent way that's really a phenomenal skill and that's something that Freddie has and that will really stand to him in the industry as time goes on um, but you know I care about the guy and whatever I can do to make sure that he's on the right track I'll make sure of it, but ultimately his decisions are his own to make. Well, thank you very much.